being present here. So, um, enjoying the violin play of Marie, Marie, Mariton, something like this. Beautiful. I love it. So, thank you so much for joining today in the um, art of unconditional love. And um, so that's great. Now we're getting back into the arts. Uh, the art of unconditional love, which is in fact something you practice all day long, whether you know it or not. Uh, so this is this is lovely. And today this subject uh, on the Sevilla website says sex and love. Now that's that's interesting. Now what are we going to do with that? How is that supposed to look now? Uh, in your awakening, is that different? In your huge transformation that you're undergoing where everything is being turned upside down how is your experience of sex and love or relationships or who knows how you yeah what you encounter um, so that's why this is an essential step so actually it's in two stages one of them today then sex and love next week the direction of miracle impulses now those two have a relationship you might not recognize that right away but after today it probably is going to be clear um, where I'm heading with this <laughs> so so here it is it's like yeah sex so for sex you need a body right at least that's what we think and even though say coming from an uh, say a care givers background some in some past uh, seeing people completely being um yeah there's a word for that uh, so they they can't move they're absolutely they're unable to get their bodies moving distortion of the neurologic center seeing that a couple together were perfectly capable of having such an incredible intimate relationship while not being able to touch one another whatsoever because their physicality was basically not uh, uh, ready not able to use at all and that was in the early 2000s that I saw that for the first time like being expressed by two persons who I gave care to now this this is interesting of course um, but anyway so here you are uh, with a body with a body that functions in some kind of way and uh, mm, seeing that most of your communication is working by uh, use of the body um, so that means then sexuality or intimacy is probably also going to be expressed through uh, physical uh, use of the physical body and so that in your transformation you could say that works um, just as well um, of course like you eat too and you drink too and you yeah all this is like you, you use your body you have a temporary use of a body uh, for the function of uh, communication as we learn in A Course in Miracles like the body has the function of being an instrument as Joel would say like being an instrument uh, also like a vehicle and a vehicle that carries you so a vehicle that you use very creatively too and sexuality might be a way um, that you use your body also creatively and so um, in our long history of mysticism like 2000 years more 5000 years probably longer uh, there has always been a tension regarding um, sexuality or uh, lust or all these all these say, attributes of related to the human body now um, there has been punishment in that direction by using expressing it in a certain way there has been this and has been that like I don't have to tell you the whole story the whole history of it 
but basically uh, for a long time it has been yeah said to be like if you want to if you want to dedicate your life to God you have to give that up right like this kind of thing it's like a sacrifice is asked now you can ask like is that necessary in, in your transformational journey do you need to sacrifice your uh, sexual desires do you need to uh, sacrifice your sexual relationships and say like okay well that's enough now I'm I'm dedicating my life to God and and that's it like that would only work for a very short time probably or you get all kinds of deviant ways in which it will come to the service like we see in, in Catholicism a lot like there's suppressed success, sexual energy you could say suppressed ideas about expressing this sexual energy uh, thinking that it needs to be suppressed uh, because it's not godly now that is not working very well is it <laughs> not in Catholicism at least and many other places either like the suppress the suppression of sexual energy is not going to be the answer to uh, finding your freedom uh, even while you're here so that's a good start isn't it so it's like one way or another you 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 cannot avoid dealing with it since since it's an integral part of your humanness but also maybe even more than that maybe even beyond your humanness there is an energy um, a passionate energy a passionate creative energy uh, that is running through you that is yeah coming into expression and in such a way that um, why not give that space and uh, why not allow that to come into a whole new idea too um, and, and we, we go through this when we take another look at it today so we'll take it easy so today we we take it easy I'm introducing you to you might have heard of it or not it's like a course of love that's uh, a three three uh, volume book uh, also a download from Jesus uh, probably in 2004 I think it came to yeah you know, into form uh, received by uh, Marie Perron and um, she received it uh, three books and in book one there's a specific section that I like to listen to with you which is called physical reality and this specific chapter has an has an uh, comfort that I love to bring in right away before we uh, start to take a look at what A Course in Miracles says um, it's like the words from A Course in Miracles not well understood or not well received for yourself you might easily use as you use everything as a human being namely to attack yourself and this introduction by a course of love will help you to go down a little bit into the into the heart level of of receiving what is actually being shared so this too we use in the course of miracles um, to to actually come to a deeper say understanding but also a deeper experience of ourselves and in fact a, a release and, and, and possibility to to freedom on a level that you might not have been in touch with so this is this is what I'm offering today in what I share with that not only with that intention with my own experiences regarding this that um, this is given this this is how that develops this is this will give you a, a greater insight in how to look at anything but also at sexuality for instance and love a course of love book one treatis on the personal self the third treatise chapter 19 physical reality 
You must not fear the changes that will occur within your physical form as it begins to be guided by the thought system of the truth rather than the thought system of illusion. You will fear these changes less if you realize that all that has come of love will be kept and that all that has come of fear will fall away. You have no need to fear that the end of the special relationship will separate you from your loved ones. You have no need to fear that the joys you have shared with others will be no more. You have no more need to fear the loss of physical joys than you have to fear the loss of mental or spiritual joys. For ages man has thought that spiritual joy diminishes physical joy. While there is no physical joy that is limited to the physical, no joy felt by the physical form alone, the joy that comes from things physical can certainly still be experienced and expressed. This is no call for judgment upon the physical. How could this be true when the physical is now called upon to serve the greatest learning humankind has ever known? Put these fears to rest. For ages, physical reality has been linked to temptation of the human experience. Let us now dispel this link. The physical form has been blamed for choices made from lust and greed, hate and fear, vengeance and retribution. These things have always had as their cause the thought system of the ego or the bitterness of the heart. As cause and effect are one, there is no effect to be seen in physical form without corresponding cause birthed in the ego thought system or the bitterness of the heart. That these feelings can be acted out by the body and in the acting out cause harm to other bodies is the cause for blame and fear of the body. So too is it with actions linked with survival needs. For ages the survival needs of the body have gone unquestioned and been held tantamount. The will of the body to survive has thus been blamed for all actions that have arisen from real and perceived lack. Yet the body was no will and the survival of the true self is not based upon it. Because the spiritual life has been so often linked with celibacy, I will mention sexual union specifically here to put behind you any fear that you may have that an end to sexual union may be called for. While some of you may have less desire for physical joining as you become more aware of unity, some may have more desire for physical joining as an expression of that union. Neither option is reason for judgment. There is only one distinction that need be made. What comes of love and what comes of fear. All expressions of love are maximal benefit to everyone. While you may, for a while yet, not see that all that are not expressions of love are expressions of fear, I assure you this is the case. Thus, any behavior, including se sexual behavior, that is not of love is of fear. All that comes of fear is nothing. What this means is that cause and effect are not influenced what, by what comes of fear. You may think that suffering and bad behavior have had great effects, but they have not. At times the love that is received following suffering, or that may arrive due to the reason of some affliction, may be seen as lessons learned from suffering or affliction, but this is no more the case than it was the case in regards to our discussion of extremes. There is no longer any time to waste on such illusions. The thought system of the truth sees no value in suffering and so sees it not in truth. The thought system of the truth is a thought system that is not split by varying goals and desires. It is a thought system of unity. It is a thought system of one thought, one goal. That goal is the origin, original thought 
that began the experience in physical form, the thought of expressing the self in observable form. Leave all blaming of the body behind and see not as the source of temptation of the human experience. The true source of these temptations has been revealed to lie within the faulty beliefs to which the body merely responded. The body's response to the new thought system will be different in many ways, none of which will lead you to feel that you have lost anything of value to you. While others still remain tied to the old thought system, human behavior will still reflect harmful actions that will seem to arise from bodily temptations. Although you will now represent who you are in physical form in a new way, you can still see that your actions of the past represented who you believed yourself to be. Thus those continuing to express themselves in harmful ways are deeply entrenched in false beliefs about themselves. Because they are not expressing who they are, their expressions are meaningless and have no effect in truth but only in illusion. To live in truth is to live without fear of the meaningless acts of those living in illusion, because they will be unable to cause effect in the house of truth. These lessons could be t not be taught while blame remained within your thought system. No victim is to blame for the violence done to them. No sick person is to blame for the illness within them. But you must be able to look at and see reality for what it is, just as we are telling you that new beliefs and ideas will lead to a new reality. Old beliefs and ideas led to the old reality, a reality that will still exist for some even after it changes completely for you. This will even s seem even more inconsistent with a benevolent universe than it once did of the difference between one reality and the other. A difference that couldn't be seen until it was represented in an observable manner, something you will now do. You would think that this disparity would be divisive and extremely uncomfortable and even rage producing for those still living in illusion. But it will be much more tempting to be divisive, uncomfortable and rage producing for those living in the new. Many who observe the new from the house of illusion will still be able to deny what they see. Just think of how many saints and miracles you have heard of in the past without being moved to believe that they mean anything at all about the nature of who you are. This is why no more time can be wasted and why so many are being called in the strongest manner it is possible to call them. It is only when what is observable is so widely evident that it can be no longer denied that changes of a large scale will begin to be seen. You will be tempted to return to the house of illusion to gather those within and bid them join you in the reality of the truth. But in this, say, in this time of Christ, a new time, a time without parallel or comparison, this will not be possible. It has been said from the beginning that your role will not be to evangelize or to be convincing. You cannot argue the case of truth in the courtroom of illusion. While this would seem to leave some without hope, it will leave no one without choice. It will make the one clear and only choice evident. It is the choice to live in truth or in illusion. There are many ways that can still be found to come to the truth. Getting to the truth will become so attractive that few will be able to resist. What will make this choice so attractive will not be martyrs and saintly souls stricken with every calamity and yet 
remaining to tell those who would listen about the glory of God. What will make this choice so attractive are ordinary people living extraordinary and miraculous and observable lives. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, that's so great. Um, so I, I love this um, part from the, A Course of Love. That's why I used it. And it is, it is like, uh, it gives you immediately a place where you can step in, in, in understanding, in recognition, in, in all of this. So um, I'm, I only introduced this today. I introduced this to, um, to be comforted by it. And that's a matter of, well, listen to it again, or listen to it a couple of times, or read, read that specific chapter. Um, a Course of Love is a book, you can, you can get it, you can read it, you can, yeah, all this. So this is, this is really lovely. Um, I'm using this, like I said, to comfort. And why is there so much necessity for comfort here? Like what is what is going on in this specific episode of the art of unconditional love? You could ask. And um, the thing is, um, to be in fact on this subject helpful, to be um, transparent in a certain sense, to be supportive. Um, uh, I want just want to express like I always do like only that that is helpful to you that I recognize myself to be helpful for me and and keeping my mind open and also respect all the the places in your transformational process where you could reside at this point of time uh, because there's an there's a transition going on there's an yeah, I say in, in a celestial uh, evolution, you could say, going on, a revolution, you can certainly say. So here it that was referred to the idea of the time of Christ. Eh? Are you recognizing that you live in the time of Christ? Since you have recognized the Christ, um, you live in the time of Christ, um, nourishing your Christ child, in fact. So... Um, it's good to uh, to take a look at certain aspects uh, regarding um, what is going on in your transformational development regarding uh, physicality, regarding sexuality, regarding um, forms of communication. Um, because that is important. You see, too, it's like it ev evolves. For some, there's no sexual desires at a certain point. For many, or for some, there's an increase of the, uh, say, the uh, desire for sexuality in the transformation. Now, all is well. It's like, all that is fine. Now, let me just start with, with an expression to, to keep it structured here. Um, so I do this for myself too. And I use the Course in Miracles because Jesus here directly talks about sexuality. Now here, we start this chapter one. So there's always a comparison to Revelation because of the intimacy. You'll see this, it's like this intimacy that you're looking for is is genuine. Huh? It, it is. Yeah. I always think I'm going to read, and I want to introduce it. So it's like you. The the point of revelation is is this. It's like it comes to you whenever it comes to you. It's a direct communication from God to you, and it uh, takes away doubt and fear for for the moment that you undergo this revelation. So it's an actual experience, but one that comes to you completely, and, and, and that is it. But a lot happens then, because in fact you experience such an incredible uh, intimacy and connectedness that you couldn't find anywhere else. Now, 
having had these revelations, I, I know what I'm talking about. It is like, um, yeah, it cannot compare with anything in this world, you could say any, yeah, even sexual experiences or whatever. It's like, oh no, this is of a different order. I'm not saying better or more. No, it is and and say almost like an integrated integral communication a communication where you recognize your oneness with your source not to be talked about like there's no way i can express it but it is it sets the tone you could say like everything then still you could say like well after that do you still uh, desire a sexual relationship? It's like, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. That doesn't contradict that. But it is it is different because of the fact that you have this experience, you could say. This, this is a memory, has become a memory and recognition that, yeah, it's, it's like that that is not in comparison with no it it is also the same as yeah i still uh, eat yes i do i still breathe too yes even though i have uh, sufficient experiences not being a body being taken completely out of this but yes i'm still breathing it doesn't contradict that at all it's like that's the paradox that we walk around in so you know it's like to make this complicated would be to to, to emphasize uh, the reality of it um, and there's no necessity to do that so i this is in other words i'm trying to keep this simple in a certain sense and um, transparent easy in fact not making a big deal out of it no just in fact come here to um, clarify to to have this so clear that it's never going to be a problem like that would be a, a desire <laughs> you could say like shut up for a moment and read it okay revelations induce complete but temporary suspension of doubt and fear they represent the original form of communication between god and his souls before the intrusion of fire and ice made this impossible the intrusion of fire and ice. It should be noted that they involve an extreme, extremely personal sense of closeness to creation, which man tries to find in sexual relationships. And maybe sometimes finds it. Who knows? This confusion is responsible for the depression and fear, which are often associated with sex. So this confusion it is looking for that, but it cannot find it, and it leads to a confusion. This confusion is responsible for the depression and fear, which are often associated with sex. So, and here we say, like, revelations induce a complete but temporary suspension of doubt and fear. So, talking about a deep experience, yes, this is one, but this one is... Um, you could say setting you free this one experience a, a revelation is setting you free from doubt and fear for a moment completely like no side effects no after party no nothing like it sets you completely free that like it's a pure receptivity pure receptance of an actual occurrence and direct communication with god that's you could say it's, that's love, huh? Love recognizing itself, you could say. So really beautiful. Now this is what you're looking for in sexual relationships. And I don't know how, what your experiences are. And I, I don't need to know either. <laughs> but, but it's like the um, looking for that closeness, in fact, in which you completely dissolve with the divine with the universe with with no after effect is what you would love as a, as an ideal relationship you could say and uh, why am i saying this well 
coming back to the sexual relationship, it's like if there are bodies involved, there's an there's an exchange going on, but also an exchange on a physical level. And this exchange on a physical level is also an exchange on memory level, physical memory level. And that's not bad, it is, but it's, it is a part of it. So that's why you could say like it is free in your experience of yourself. It is free to be there. It's free to ex exchange that or to, to live that, so to speak. No problem. Sure. But it is, it is not universal in that sense. It is not universal. If it would be a universal experience, you, you would be able to, in fact, open that up to everyone you meet, to, to, with no, with no, um, yeah, you could say social laws of relationship. Now we have done this, now you have to stay with me. You're mine. You know, yes, I want that again. Now you have to do that again. And it has to look like that. And, you know, like these laws that you put on top of it, of what you expect and want and desire. What you desire has already a form. Now it cannot be free because you already made it into a form. It's like... I'm, I'm not saying anything new. Uh, this is this is what you know. But it's like this is an essential part. Now coming back then to direct communication with your brother, like the miracle, is is then recognizing that in your love for your brother, which is an also like a totally intimate moment, uh, but on the whole, almost like impersonal level you experience your common source your love for your brother without any physical exchange at all completely recognizing that the open minds communicate that they they recognize their common source directly receiving that finding yourself in communication uh, like instantaneous um, so this, this can happen with anyone, at any time, at any place. It is not limited to a bedroom or who, whatever, <laughs> or wherever you, you practice it. Like, no, this can happen literally everywhere. Same with revelation, it can happen everywhere. And it, it will not disturb in that sense, it will not be an event uh, unless you take part in it, it is a defend, an event. So this is this is what I'm trying to express here. Um, it's like the freedom that comes with that is it's amazing because it is what you will recognize. This is my experience, of course, that I'm talking about. Like I'm, I ex I discovered the freedom that I was always looking for in relationships was given me in the miracle and experiencing the holy instant together with my brother like that is exactly the offering in fact it's like yeah that that is what i was looking for basically um that is um total love for your brother it's the art of total love you could say unconditional with no the conditions like you can love somebody completely, but you can also, the day after, so to speak, uh, set already a set of rules in action in order to protect that. Now, well, this, what I'm talking about is free constantly. It, it releases itself by being open, by letting that occur, by staying present. And all this, like that is, that is a possibility. And it's it's the easiest and most natural one too. And it's part of the, you could say, part of the program, part of the awakening through, for instance, using A Course in Miracles. This is what you will discover as one way to, to be present. Um, yeah, so I... Uh, if you recognize this, lovely, great, of course. 
I'm like, of course you can recognize this. And if this is new to you, well, great. Now you've discovered something that you thought might exist, but now actually you can experience it here with me if you want. Like, yeah, this is this is the intimacy we're talking about. This is the that what you are looking for in a relationship, like the recognition in in an say a huge skill um, recognizing your source together and your oneness with your brother of course the pleasure which is derived from sex as such is rea uh, reliable only because it stems from an error which man shared awareness Oh wait, I have to let someone in. Awareness of the error produces the guilt. Denial of the error results in pro projection. Correction of the error, so there are three things. Correction of the error brings release. Now let's get back to what is this saying? The pleasure which is derived from sex as such is reliable only because it stems from an error which man shared. What is this error? This error is in fact that you think that your level of experience is physical. That's an, in truth, I as you could say, is an error. It's not that something went wrong, but it's more like, well, you have to believe that, that you can experience it there in order for it to work. You know what I'm saying? So awareness of the error produces guilt. It's like, well, I know better. Truth is true and it has nothing to do with my physicality directly. Denial of the error results in projection. So denial of the error is like trying not to think about that. Uh, is something like you try to suppress it in a certain sense. Correction of the error brings the release. It's like if you allow it to be corrected, uh, it is it is like invite Jesus into your bedroom or wherever. It's like invite Jesus or Holy Spirit in into your um, into your mindset like allow the correction to take place if anything needs to be corrected like we said in the beginning it, it all depends on your where do you experience yourself in what level of experience are you in I'm just offering you other possibilities you could say that that might surprise you for their uh, universal application to say the least um, so this is then the fact that you would protect it and want to keep it would prevent you from the healing that could take place. And the healing in terms of an openness to a new experience of yourself, even more, even more, even more. Like, absolutely. Sex is often associated with lack of love. But revelation is purely a love experience. Now you can read this as sex is, is the same as lack of love. Well, that is not true. No, it's often associated with it. It doesn't mean that it has to be like that, but it is often associated with it. But revelation is purely a love experience. Physical closeness cannot achieve this pure love experience. And you understand that when you experience revelation. Till that time, you think there's nothing but the, the sexual sexual experience that would really be the top of your of your peak experience, you could say. But with revelation, that all shifts around and changes. Physical closeness cannot achieve this, as said before. The subconscious impulses properly induce miracles which are interpersonal and result to closeness to others. This can be misunderstood by a personally willful consciousness as an impulse towards sexual gratification. 
Now you have to be careful reading this too, because I made a mistake not to do that. Uh, for instance, uh, I've misunderstood this expression. So this can be misunderstood by a personally willful consciousness as an impulse towards sexual gratification. It's in fact confusing the miracle impulse with a sexual impulse. So the miracle impulses, the subconscious impulses that are coming up in you as a, as a desire, as a need, as a desire for union, for instance, it's an interpersonal one. It results in closeness to others. And it can be misunderstood, thinking that you need to bring it into a physical expression. But that doesn't need to be that way. Um, so here, oh yeah, here's another expression. The revelation unites souls directly with God. See, we come back to revelation the whole time because, not that I put it next to it as a comparison, but it's more like you just have to know what is available to you. Okay, sexual fantasies are distortions of perception by definition. They are a means of making false associations and obtaining pleasure for them. Man can do this only because he is creative. But although he can perceive false associations, he can never make them real except to himself. As was said before, man believes in what he creates. If he creates a miracle, he will be equally strong in his belief in that. The strength of his conviction will, be, will then sustain the belief of the miracle receiver. All these words, what does it mean? <laughs> See, this, this is why I read something from A Course of Love, but when I, when I listen to it now myself, I think like, wow, that is still a lot of words, that is still a lot of uh, nuance in expression to come to a clarity. And, and that's so interesting. So to, to keep it simple, we make it complicated first and then go back to uh, we as teachers of God, you could say, we make it complicated first and then go back to the essence of it, recognizing that it's so simple, but you wouldn't take it if it was simple. Otherwise, you already would have accepted it. All right, so now what? Um, maybe time for a love song, for, for just a little of relaxation together. Let's do that. So, bringing this back here, um, so the great thing we can experience, in fact, is like, what is, what is so attractive for you to listen to this? It's like, what is so attractive to be part of this? What brings you back to uh, this discipline? What, yeah, what does bring you back to this experience, to this uh, adventure that we're on together? Like, what is that? And that is a strong desire. It's like, in a certain sense, truth becomes so attractive that you don't know where to get it from, except, of course, within yourself. And yeah, any place that you're reminded of it is such an oasis, you could say, um, that brings you back to the reality of you. And so that's not something to be underestimated, of course. It's like it, it said it too in the course of love. It's like it becomes so attractive to you. Truth becomes so attractive to you. It might it might just drive you nuts in a certain sense. Like you want to experience it above all else. You want to experience it. Well, if it is above all else, it becomes pretty passionate altogether. Like then then. You become, you could say, like you become um, the revelation ready when that is that level is so up, your passion for it is so up. So now, um, I think that is an important thing that we recognize. It's like whether you are 
seeing these videos or whether you're coming to these meetings, you recognize that. You know that your ultimate uh, freedom lies in truth, in you, and not anywhere else. So does that does that exclude anything? No, that not necessarily. No, sure not. No, but but it it does direct your uh, actions, like it does direct your attention. It does direct your um, say level of experience. So that it's like step by step, you see that you're undergoing this process, seeing that things fall away, that you, yeah, that are not contributing to that any longer. Just like I said yesterday, with cleaning up your house and and uh, things that were so precious to you, you actually give them away or let them be for whatever they are. Suddenly, you have that. You clean your house from your old memories or you clean out your books with all the spiritual diversity that is available and and all this is like that is all happening because in fact your your desire becomes unified to the one desire for the father now that sounds very beautiful and holy but then the next day it's like how about <laughs> how about your sexuality it's like how how much is left over of that or how, how how do you deal with that now i don't have an answer for you except for the fact that it will not be any different than you would start any other day in terms of well, are you going to make the decisions yourself about what to do, where to go and all this? No. So you are in a procedure where you discover the value of guidance and the value of staying present in the moment, not tempting yourself with future, future fantasies, whether they are sexual or not. It doesn't even matter. It's all the same stuff, you could say, the same imagining that you do. But coming back to this present moment, in fact, allowing the world to collapse all the time um, makes it that you are present here to receive this guidance that is giving you all the time. Now, this guidance takes care of, of in fact, all your actions too, because they are in alignment with it when you allow that to occur. If you still have an idea about how things should look or what you absolutely don't want to lose, that will determine your level of experience. See, that's not any different than anything else. So here is really where something happens. In fact, in terms of healing, like the guidance is still the same. You always come back to this present moment. Are you willing to receive what is given? Are you choosing for love, for openness? Or are you choosing for fear, thinking that something, that you might lose something, or you might lose grip or control, or who knows what? Like that goes into every step along the way. Now that is is the um, the guidance that is given, and that I'm reminding you of, no matter what the subject is. So that makes it back again, like universal, you could say. But also, it's like you never have to uh, limit yourself in any way. But the invitation is to hand everything over in the first place so that you know that every need will be fulfilled. That, you know, every um, before you ask, it is already given. Now, this. Um, sense of fulfillment this this uh, gift is given you in every instant and however that looks in form like however that looks in form is not up to you it will present itself and how is that relating then to sexual experiences well even in that like if that is the occurrence that has to take place, you could say, it will be given. That will come your way too, in whatever form, in whatever moment. Like, don't exclude anything, is what I'm saying. It's like, the freedom lies in not excluding it. No, completely including it all. Don't make it any 
thing that stands outside of it. Otherwise, um, you will have it come back to you, just like the priests and uh, who knows who's who suppress the sexual energy and see it come back all the time in all kinds of perversities, and and it doesn't work. We've tried; it didn't work, so we gave up on that. So that's the decision that we make today. It's like well, we give up on that. There's no way of doing that. There's no need to do that. If it, we include the whole of humanity, the whole, every expression of it in totality, or we exclude it completely, which would makes it, which would make this like a, a, a failed mission. Like no, we include it all in, but. We stick with our, uh, we stick with our guidance. We come back to this moment. We drop our ideas. We release our ideas, and here we walk step by step, moment by moment, receiving, trusting, living in the confidence that everything is given in the right moment, in the way that is for you. It's like just like that, like that will happen not by your force or control, no, by you giving space to all of it, including everyone and everything in. So that that sounds like a beautiful message, <laughs> it, and it is. <laughs> it is, and it's, uh, it's a practice that we do. It's like this comes back in every uh, layer of your experience, in every item in your experience. And it is there for uh, for healing and for acceptance, not for rejection or suppression. So it's so great, you know, it's such liberating um, idea that is in fact being shared. So this is what I had in the beginning, like I don't know how to express this, but when I want to come to the point where you see how valuable in that sense everything is in order to discover what the real meaning of it is, or the real thing behind it all, um, like the the absolute closeness with your Creator, the absolute oneness with your Creator, um, because this this is kind of um, practical. It's like the pleasure which is derived from sex as such is reliable only because it stems from an error which man shared like awareness of the error produces the guilt denial of the error results in projection so you're going to project it onto your brother um, blaming him for instance or activities like that or correction of the error brings the release where where you, in fact, um, give up the shared uh, idea of error. Now, why am I bringing this back up? Mm. So there's something there that can help us. And that's why it comes up, otherwise it wouldn't come up. So the correction of errors, like now error sounds like you did something wrong. That's not so. Like error, you could say, is an, um, you cannot um, experience the things um, beyond your realm of experience that you're in. So when you believe that this is the way that it works, well, then it works like that for you until you discover something else. Then you see it for what it was before. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is easy. We, we see this in all kinds of um, examples. Um, so this would be one of them then. It's like, you think that you do it this way because this is the way that you do it. So that's why you think it should look like that. For instance, sexuality as being a physical um, um, attempt to communicate together and enjoy together, to, to experience pleasure together. That is your, say, within the realm of your experience, your way that it comes into expression. Now, that can change, of course. So suddenly your partner falls away or who knows what happens. 
and you're there uh, discovering, in fact, that it, there's a communication possible that doesn't need a body, for instance. Now you discovered something new, like that was a real eye-opener to me, that you can actually directly communicate with with each other in uh, in this, in an, yeah in a sphere you could say where that is recognized uh, you could say like mind at once suddenly you recognize that you're communicating directly with one another great not by your doing it is given it's like it's not a force no it's it's given it's a possibility here and and that can change too of course like in the moment of direct revelation you and God uh, are one that's what you experience not not being able to express more about that taking away doubt and fear completely free of everything because doubt and fear is really what this world is when you really take a look at it and so so the error corrected you could say takes place on the level of experience that you find yourself and then when it is corrected you see that it was an error before you didn't even know it was an error so this is this is why i'm bringing this in and and it's like you hear it when you hear it you hear it when you want to hear it if you resist it you will not hear it so if you're open you can receive this is what i'm saying it's like that that's great <laughs> I made my attempt. So next week, for instance, we we uh, continue with, in fact, the same subject, but looking a little deeper at the miracle impulses, like the and the distortion of miracle impulses, but also the miracle impulses themselves. We we have talked about that before on the levels of subconscious levels of impulses superficial level of impulses which you can easily grab as an attack for instance you feel the need to to lash out or but deeper levels deeper le deeper level of experience can very well be the um, the miracle impulse um, okay so that's the other part that we're going to look at next week now um, I say thank you so much for your attention and um, taking time to listen to this, uh, to to discover with me where we can actually meet in connecting about this, including every uh, aspect of it in, not judging or denying anything, um, but coming to a place where, in fact, we come to the the fine arts of love and that is just amazing so words fail entirely so that's why I might as well just not try to express that so thank you so much for your presence and see you soon thank you so much